The popular will win, the hated will lose. It's such a tragedy. Then I won't lose to anyone. I will become the strongest monster ever and change this scenario. I judge anime 2023 was probably high on crayon dust. Do you often like the hero of a story or are you drawn more so to the villain of the story? If your answer was that you oftentimes related more to the villains, then you might relate to the character we will be talking about today. That's right, today will be all about the human turd monster, the self-proclaimed hero hunter and one of the biggest threats to the hero association ever, Garo. Garo is one of the major villains in One Punch Man. Aside from being a human with the ambition to become the greatest monster the world has ever seen, he is also a martial arts prodigy who studied under Bang. Garo brought fear and terror to both the monster association and the hero association with his fearsome powers and drive to win at all costs, eventually being beaten by Saitama, ending his streak of battles as the human monster. To those who have seen or read One Punch Man, the fact that Gado is a pretty strong guy is pretty obvious. In the One Punch Man universe, Gado is one of the stronger fighters for sure. Him taking a punch from the guy called One Punch Man without getting one shot is a pretty good indicator of his strength. Gado has a couple of interesting abilities which I am pretty excited to start talking about. So without further delay, let's start breaking apart what Gado can bring to the table. Even well before starting his hero hunt, Gado was Bang's strongest disciple. He was a master in martial arts and was an absolute menace who defeated all of his master Bang's other disciples before being expelled from the dojo due to being a bit too fond of rampages. Gado also has immense physical strength to complement his mastery of the martial arts. In many of his battles, one or two punches are pretty much all it takes to knock out a full-grown a class hero, which might not sound that impressive, but when you consider how strong your average a class hero is, it becomes a bit more impressive. Being physically strong is also something that translates to Garo being very durable. Even after being beaten down by S-class heroes, he was able to keep standing and take on several A and B-class heroes while severely injured. He even survived being two times by two demon level monsters. Garo also happens to be one fast boy. So fast in fact that he can dodge a bullet two centimeters away from his eye without getting hit. Another display of his amazing speed and reflexes is when he was capable of consistently dodging the S-class hero Metal Bat's assault or when he protected the boy from the Death Gatling attack. Gado is also an incredibly fast learner. He went from being too weak to consistently fight against S-Class heroes to being able to overpower and crush them in a very small frame of time. Now, Gado has a crap ton of specific martial art techniques that are way too long for me to cover here in depth. If I did, this video would legit be close to 30 minutes and I really don't want that, so instead of focusing on those, I want to focus on another ability Gado is shown to have. If you are excited to get additional context on this video and see what kind of martial arts techniques Gado does have, you can always check out the One Punch Man wiki. It has a pretty elaborate explanation on every single martial arts technique Gado has used. But moving along, Gado's unusually quick monstrification is the direct result of his incredibly high adaptability. After being pushed to his absolute limits by the group of A and B class heroes, followed by Bang, Bomb and Genos, and finally followed by Royal Ripper and Bug God, his power increases explosively as he enters a state of half human half monster, like a kind of an in-between kind of state. Monster Garo is incredibly strong as shown by him defeating guys like Bang and Platinum Sperm in his evolved monster state. During his fight with Saitama, he underwent multiple stages of further evolution and was shown to be able to survive multiple punches from Saitama. Although we do have to keep in mind that Saitama was still holding back during this fight, he wasn't like in a serious mode. But still, surviving two punches is something not everybody can do. In his monster state, Gado has access to regeneration much like the Namekians have in Dragon Ball. He can heal serious injuries allowing him to continue fighting for a very long time. And to top things off, we have what I personally call God Gado, but the official naming is Cosmic Fear Gado. In this form, Gado was able to fight relatively well against a serious Saitama who was only using one hand. And saying it like that sounds really weird, I know, but this actually proves that Gado is the strongest foe Saitama has faced to this point. After eventually losing to Saitama, Gado loses the ability to access his cosmic fear mode due to his divine power fading away. An important note to make for this video is that I will be using the Gado that faced Saitama, so I want to include his access to his cosmic fear mode for this video because that just seems a lot more fun than just 
just grabbing regular Goro. Cosmic Goro constantly emits a deadly amount of radiation that will cause any living creature near him to display symptoms of real world radiation poisoning. He can also create portals, fire cosmic energy blasts, and to top it off his most broken ability, he can copy an opponent's move with the exact same power as his opponent would have when using the move. Now, this ability is not perfect though, because as shown during his fight with Saitama, if Goro can't gauge his opponent's strength, he can't accurately copy it. So if an opponent grows faster than Goro is or is just significantly stronger than Goro, he might not be able to accurately pinpoint how strong he is so he can't accurately copy the attack. Now we have talked long enough about what Goro can do, let's see how far he would get in Dragon Ball. For starters, I will immediately skip the entirety of Dragon Ball alongside the Saiyan Saga because in all honesty, Goro would ass blast them with ease. If I try to play a Saiyan Saga Vegeta versus Cosmic Goro in my head, I don't really see a way Vegeta can win. If he doesn't die to Goro's physical attacks, I doubt he would be able to survive the radiation Goro emits at all times. Vegeta being very humanoid compared to the other aliens in Dragon Ball leads me to believe that radiation would affect him in a very similar manner to how it would affect humans. Frieza vs Goro is a fight that has more potential though. For starters, Goro's radiation would probably not work on Frieza. I say probably because obviously I can't be 100% certain of this, but with Frieza being able to just survive in the vacuum of space, it leads me to believe that he is capable of surviving in high radiation environments as well. Frieza is just one of those incredibly durable aliens that just doesn't give a crap about where he is or what the environment is. Another thing is that Goro sends Saitama's Jupiter destroying sneeze, which leads me to believe that a planet destroying attack would have a decent effect on Goro. Frieza in his first form could do the same, and obviously if we put Frieza in his final form or his full power form, he would dish out attacks far more powerful than destroying a single planet. Honestly, I believe that full power Frieza vs Cosmic Gatto would not be a short fight, but I think Gatto could come out on top because Frieza will lose his power in his full power state, whilst Gatto will only improve. If we turn this into a battle of attrition, we can safely assume that Gatto would come out on top in the end. If we move on to the next saga, the first interesting enemy, or in this case enemies, I would like to see Gero face, would be androids 16, 17 and 18. These androids possess essentially limitless energy, meaning they never get tired. Unless Gato can evolve fast enough, I believe these three could have the potential to defeat Gato. Since they are artificial humans, I also believe the radiation would not affect them. Each of these androids is significantly stronger than Frieza was, however Gato could still beat them. My reasoning for this is that he was able to match Saitama's serious punch, which was stated to be galaxy level or higher. Due to this feat, I have settled with placing Gato on the same level as Super Perfect Cell. Allow me to explain myself. Cell being a bio-android with insane regeneration abilities would be pretty much immune to the radiation and could match Gato in power, if not surpass him. There is also the fact that Gato would have to miraculously know that he had to destroy Cell's nucleus in order to defeat him. It's far more likely Cell would just keep coming back more powerful each time Gato would think he had won. Cell is one of those chi type enemies that just keep reviving over and over and over again. It's kinda like those bosses that just end up having a gazillion gajillion secret other phases before you finally beat them. In this case I think Cell would come out on top, but not without getting his perfect little ass beaten down quite hard. Huh? So if we take a look at our tier list, we can see that as of right now, Goro holds the first place on who would get the furthest in the Dragon Ball universe. Scaling Goro, or anyone from One Punch Man by the way, is nearly impossible. The reason for this is that we can only really scale most characters from One Punch Man to Saitama. And fun fact, we don't even have a ceiling on where to scale Saitama himself. So all we can really do is try and make a rough estimation on some of the battles we have seen these guys partake in and translate them to Dragon Ball. Looking at the fight between Saitama and Goro, I, I wouldn't put Goro above Cell personally. Now of course I understand that a part of this is just my opinion, there will probably be a lot of people who will argue that Goro could beat guys like Kid Buu, but I personally just don't think so. I think Cell is a very appropriate ceiling for Goro to have stopped at. If you think Goro would be able to get further in Dragon Ball, or if you think he would 
would actually be stopped before he reached the cell? Let me know in the comments down below and have a discussion about it. Now, thank you all so much for watching my videos. We are closing in on 2000 subscribers at the time I am creating this script and I honestly never thought that I would get past 100 subscribers. Seeing all of you just debate in the comments and show support really just makes my day and I just really wanted to take this time to show my gratitude to all of the people who have shown me support. With that being said, once again, thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more similar content in the future, please subscribe and hit the bell icon to never miss another video again. And I will see you all again in the next video.